I want more monkey. What's poppin' y'all? Welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're taking a look at another film review. Today we're taking a look at Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. And that's such an awful title. That is what I want to get off my chest straight off the bat. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. The double of the um, is terrible English and needs to be addressed. And my English teacher would not be impressed if um, you guys are... Uh, actually use that in your titles it, it's not a good title it doesn't flow off the tongue it isn't nice it is too much of these and you should use some other words to sort of strengthen your vocabulary and sort of strengthen your title a little bit more because it is very repetitive and it doesn't sound that good when you say it out loud kingdom of the planet of the apes like it, it just isn't nice and you know you, you won't get a high mark in english for it so that I, I just wanted to get that out of the way right off the start because I have very strong feelings about it because um, I got a six in English, so I need to spread my English knowledge uh, right now, dropping some English bombs on you. But um, let's quickly get into Google right now. Uh, so, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Shit title, by the way. But um, it is a two-hour and 25-minute film. It came out in 2024 and has a 7.2 out of 10 on IMDb and 81% on Rotten Tomatoes. So they don't think it's too bad. However, I'll be the judge of that. I'll be the opinionator here. I'll be judging how good this movie is. Because that's why we've come to this video, obviously. But many, many years after the reign of Caesar, a young ape goes on a journey that will lead him to question everything he's been taught about the past, and maybe choices that will define the future for apes and humans alike. So how this movie actually starts is he's going on an egg hunt. He's ba It's basically Easter. They're going to go find eggs. They're climbing up these sort of like apocalyptic sort of buildings where humans haven't been around for thousands of years and there's a load of foliage over all the buildings and they're crumbling down. So they go to find these eggs because they're a sort of clan of falcon teachers who send the falcons out to hunt for food. So these guys are going to go raise their own falcons and they all need an egg so they can start a bonding exercise with their birds. And they all get their own egg, they go back and a human enters the village and breaks one of their eggs. So he goes to find another one, and he accidentally leads a bunch of apes back to the village, and they end up destroying the village. And he's the last one that remains. He was knocked out, and his father has died. So it sets him on a revenge path to go hunt down the other apes and basically save his village. So he goes on a mission, and he meets an orangutan who's very religious and treats Caesar like Jesus. He is monkey Jesus, if Deadpool can be Marvel Jesus, Caesar can be Monkey Jesus, and they continue their journey with and finding a human who's been following them. They build a little bond with this human, get to comfortable with her, get to know her, and then the orangutan dies. Raga dies trying to save the human. Very sad moment. I didn't cry. I kind of expected him to come back, but he didn't, so uh, more fool me. And, uh, yeah, they both got sent to this sort of camp where they had to try and open this vault door, um, which isn't okie dokie. So Caesar and the girl sort of forged a plan to break their way into the vault and flood it with water. They successfully do that plan, but the girl goes rogue, and instead of getting all of their clan to safety, all of the Falcon group to safety, they, um... They flush, flush them into the vault as well. They all manage to climb their way out to the top and to freedom, uh, but the king does too, and uh, they use their falcon song to make him get eaten. They basically make him get killed by the falcons. However, we never see his dead body, so he could potentially come back for another one. And that's pretty much where the movie ends with them rebuilding their village and the two girls going on a honeymoon and the satellites turning on and the humans com communicating with other humans from across the world. That's it. That's the movie. I'm going to be honest, it's kind of like an Avatar situation where the animation and the CGI is that beautiful and that good and that advanced that you forget about it within the first five minutes because the entire movie looks like that and it just becomes the new norm. So it doesn't get appreciated enough. So I'm just going to do, do this little segment here at the start of this video to um, say how good the animation is, how realistic these monkeys look, and how fucking cool these monkeys look. These monkeys were spitting. These monkeys were throwing up blood. These monkeys were shedding. It is so fucking detailed and so fucking beautiful. Like, just to see an apocalyptic wasteland jungle city hybrid... It's just so cool, and you know half of that shit was CGI, you know half of that wasn't even fucking real, that was all computer generated, so, you know, you, you, got, you, got, you gotta give, like, props where props are due, because 
because it was a, a really gorgeous film. It was a gorgeous film. The villain wasn't that good, I'm going to be honest. He was just a king who wanted to get into a vault to uh, get the human secrets, which um, the little girl didn't want him to do because it would have caused a load of chaos and a load of sort of destruction across the planet, which is, isn't that what humans do? This is another movie showing how shitty humans are. We have enough of those. I don't want to be reminded how much of a shitty, shitty, shitty piece of trash that I am for being human. I, I know, I know humans are shit, I, I know they are, but I don't need to be reminded by every movie like this, and I got very heavy Fallout vibes from, from the end of this movie, and the costumes definitely gave that away, because when Maya slash Nova came out of the vault, she was dressed in all blue, very similar to how the vault dwellers dress, and towards the start of the film, she was dressed like Lara Croft from Tomb Raider, so v very, very, very gamey vibes here and very Fallout vibes when they actually went into the bunker to find all the human civilization secrets. It was very much, very much Fallout. And it it was weird because they painted Maya to be this good hero to start with, but then they slowly started dropping secrets, slowly started dropping hints, slowly building her up to be the bad guy by showing us it from the ape's perspective of them learning some human secrets, them seeing her start to act more shady. She's built up the trust so she thinks she can get away with a little bit more. And she is already sort of yelling at the apes by the end of the movie, saying how that they don't deserve the planet. It was a human planet first. Her science isn't right. Her history isn't right. It was actually apes that became before humans. We evolved from apes. So, you know, it's uh, the ape planet first. So they're just taking it back from us, which is completely fair. I, I completely validate and side with the apes at this point. Um, they can take it back. Um, I'm not going to put up a fight because I know I can't. And it, I don't know. It just feels like she she was such a good, nice character and... Towards the end, she just sort of snapped and turned, but I don't know what was the turning point for her, or was this her intention the entire time? Because if it was, she is so fucking good at manipulation, she is so fucking good at acting, she deserves a fucking Oscar for being such a good, kind character towards the start when the orangutan was here, but then as soon as the orangutan left and the sort of trust between the other monkey and her was slightly rocky. She completely fucked it. She completely destroyed the trust she had built between these two characters. And just because he spared her at the end of the movie does not mean that there isn't going to be an all-out war between humans and sort of monkeys in the next one. I also do want to go back and mention that we never got specifically showed a dead body of the king, so I do believe they will be bringing him back in a future movie. They always do. If they do not officially see him die, if you do not see his dead body, he's coming back 100%. He is going to be back in a future movie, coming for revenge, and probably, like, sort of scarred, broken, and annoyed, and full of fear. Like, you know, he's going to be fear-fueled. And he's going to come and absolutely lay waste to their village with a new monkey army. Don't know where he'll get it from. I have no idea where he'll get it. However, he will get one. And he will absolutely dominate the Falcon Village. And I, I think he's the new chief of the Falcon Village. I don't know. He kind of went off on a honeymoon with a falcon and a girl. Which he had no sort of relationship chemistry with throughout the entire movie. He gave her a quick glance and the girl said, You like her, don't you? And that was it. That was the only form of chemistry or sort of information we got to them actually liking each other or being remotely close. And I kind of feel like that was a little bit shitty. That was a little bit of a cop-out. That wasn't a good sort of movie idea. It just felt kind of lazy, I'm going to be honest. It didn't feel right. It felt a little wrong, which is sort of... I don't know, it kind of felt forced and nothing was really there with it. Also, fucking... The Gallagher guy was here. The guy from Shameless was here. Like, what? I did not expect... He was the last person I expected to be in this movie. And I think... 
Anna killing him was the thing that sort of started it off with being like, hey, there's something wrong here. You're being very shady and very sort of secretive to the monkeys and not telling everything. But then again, she lied to him at the start and she kept lying to him. Once people show your true colors, once people tr show their true colors, that's their true colors. They're not going to change. That is just them. That's just how they are. So it was, it was, it was literally fed to us from the start. It was fed to us from the start and... We deserve falling for it. I'm going to be honest. We deserve falling for it. This is a really good movie, and it is one that you don't need to watch The Other Planet of the Apes to understand. There is a couple of mentions of Caesar, but you, you don't need to watch the others to understand. So as a solo movie, as a person who hasn't seen the other ones, I feel like this one is a pre pretty solid 8 out of 10. I very much enjoyed this movie. I thought it was really cool and really interesting. So, um, yeah, it's an 8 out of 10. It's an 8 out of 10. I'm very happy with it, and I'm excited for the next four that they make, because they've already planned another four.